This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Monday, the 20th day of December in the year 2021. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. Overwhelmed with emotions and being elected as the new leader of the People's National Congress reform, Aubrey Norton has promised to not only take the party back to the grassroots, but to ensure the representation of all the people of Guyana from all ethnicities. I want to promise you that I will make this party a grassroots party. A party for all Guyanese, of all ethnic groups. It is the kind of party we desire. I want to work with this executive to transform this party into a permanent election campaign machinery. I must submit to you. This is the first time in a long time I've been overwhelmed. And I believe the party has put trust in me and I hope to deliver on it. The new PNC leader also announced that in keeping with the party's constitution, he has asked former chairman Volder Lawrence and longtime member Dr. Richard Van West Charles to serve as advisors to the party. He said both have accepted. Mr. Norton also stated that he will be working along with the current opposition leader Joe Harmon on issues related to moving the party forward and developing it. Norton won the race for PNC leader by a landslide, winning 13 of the 14 voting districts at the elections and amassing a total of 967 votes. His closest rival for the position of leader was Joe Harmon, who was far behind with 245 votes. The new PNC leader said he intends to govern the party with all of its members, including those who competed against him at the elections. He said the elections are over and the party with a united membership must move forward. I promise inclusive governance. We will govern this party together. We will work together. I do not want to hear in our party that somebody was against Norton and so that person is excluded. This is our party, the elections are over and we must move forward. And Norton also said as the party begins its new course on the new leadership, it will confront the struggles already facing it. We have to carry the political struggle. Our first struggle will be for a new voters list. We cannot go to an election without a new voters list. It has been the basis on which a government was installed and we have to uninstall them and that process yes. must begin yes. with a new voters list. Yes. We will oppose vigorously the gerrymandering of the electoral boundaries. We will not allow them to change the boundaries in Region 4. The new PNC leader said the party will be fighting against any attempt by the government to change the boundaries of Region 4 for election purposes. He also made it clear that the party will continue to make its opposition known against the decision by the Elections Commission to hire Vishnu Prasad as the new Chief Election Officer. Norton said Prasad was not the most qualified or experienced of the candidates who applied for that job. But as we look at elections in the party, and vouch for its transparency, we cannot sit idly by and allow the PPP and Claudette Singh to install Vishnu Prasad as Chief Elections Officer. We need to restore in this country the situation where people are appointed based on merit and in keeping with the specifications of the job. In this regard, we are satisfied that Vishnu Prasad was not the best candidate. Yeah. Yeah. It is a collusion between the PPP commissioners and Claudette Singh, and therefore, automatically, it will face protest in every fashion, because the basis for free and fair elections has to be independent election officials, and they are not. The PNC leader said there are a number of other issues that will be addressed by the party in the coming days and early into the new year.
He brushed aside criticism of him from the governing PPP and accused that party of being divisive in its governance. The PNC elections on Saturday also saw the election of a new chairman. Young Member of Parliament Sherwin Holder from Region 2 has been elected as the chairman of the party, while Fayaz Mersaline takes over as treasurer. The party's constitution has provisions for two vice chairpersons, while party member Elizabeth Williams Niles has been elected as one of the vice persons, the party will have to decide on the way to break a tie for the other vice person spot. The party's central executive committee will see a mixture of some old and new faces, with many of the first-time parliamentarians gaining ground in the party and now moving on to the executive. More news coming up in just a moment. I'm feeling it! You know it? That Christmassy feeling? Fran, I'm ready for everything! All the decorations and lights bring on all the Christmas goodness! And I heard GTT is giving away millions in cash and prizes for the season! It just doesn't get any better! Multiple draws, multiple chances to win, live radio giveaways of cash, grocery vouchers, phone credit and more! Free data, free calls, and free accessories with the purchase of every handset. Sign up, top up, pay any GTT bill or purchase a handset to get a chance to celebrate with GTT and MMG. Together we celebrate, together we win. GTT, together we rise. The light on your face, no mess will hide. Feel the joy burn deep inside. Let's have a great Christmas this year. Whatever you need, light up your Christmas with Republic Bank and get a chance to win 825,000 in cash prizes. Plus get a chance to give a family a Christmas hamper in your name. Log on to RepublicGuyana.com for more details. Let's light up Christmas. Republic Bank. We're the one for you. Feeling best, sunshine stacks above the rest. There is no contest, it's the best mate, so we feeling best. Best value to how you're feeling. All the cheese is too much, ripples and more combo pack of flavors galore, yeah. Combo pack of we feeling best, sunshine stacks above the rest. There is no contest, it's the best mate, so we feeling best. Sunshine snacks combo pack, now with a new look and new mix. Grab your pack today, best mix, so we feeling best. Give me one damn day for my whole family. Their bread is tasty. Then bake, bake, bake. Baked with love and passion by our dedicated team of fine bakers, we give you Dem Bake. With the same great quality you're used to, we now have a slightly new look. Here in Land of Canaan, we are ready to give you even more. Don't wait until you're hungry. Reach for a slice of Dem Bake. Dem Bake, Dem Bake. Healthy, wholesome living. Mom, what are you doing with GPL on your list? Child, you forgot I have to pay GPL? You got time with GPL. I have to keep these lights on. The customers who think in that manner and refuse to honor their obligation to GPL are obviously not playing their part in ensuring quality service delivery. So, I will continue to pay my GPL bill on time, every time. I recognize the value of your point, Mom. You were right. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Saul Guyana Inc. We've got exciting news! All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come full get color. your Buster, Buster $100.
Let GBTI make your dreams of owning a home a reality. Buy or build your home with us. Let us help you to completely outfit your home and make it move in ready. Need to purchase land? We finance that too. Benefit from our 10% down payment and interest rates as low as 4.25%. Calculated on the reducing balance with up to 30 years to repay. Switch your mortgage to us and learn about benefiting from the equity in your home. Invest wisely. Apply online or call your branch to schedule an appointment gbti we see guyana through your eyes welcome back with longtime party executive aubrey norton taking over the reins as leader of the pnc reform his former competitors for that position joe Harmon and dr richard van west charles are promising their support in the efforts to unify the party and build its new path forward in a brief statement opposition leader joe Harmon said he respects the wishes of the delegates who chose mr norton over him and wishes him and his new team a successful tenure Mr. Harmon said he is sure that matters relating to the party's leadership will come up and he stands ready to be part of those discussions. For his part, Dr. Richard Van Ries Charles said he respects the will of the PNC electorate and wants the incoming executive to take the responsibility given to them seriously. He urged that the party base not be forgotten. Coming in with just 64 of the almost 1,300 votes that were cast, Dr. Charles expressed regret that he was not able to win the race but said he remains proud of the process. As we reported earlier, Mr. Norton copped the top party position with 967 votes, while Mr. Harmon trailed behind with 245. The new alternative road linking the communities of Maka and Great Diamond on the east bank of the Marara was commissioned early this morning. The new road link is seen as an alternative route for commuters and will likely ease the daily congestion on some parts of the east bank corridor. During the sunrise commissioning ceremony, President Irfan Ali warned that there will be serious consequences for persons who utilize the road in a reckless manner, either by speeding or by the use of heavy-duty vehicles. But these roads are not racetracks. And this road is designed for a specific category of vehicle, and that is uh, small vehicle SUVs. The big trucks, you will see barriers. If you think it is your responsibility to take down the barriers because you want to break the law, there will be consequences, and you will face the consequences. The president noted that there are several similar projects which are ongoing to further ease the traffic burden that commuters face on the east bank of the Marara. He called out contractors who he believes are dragging their feet on roadworks in the Diamond and other East Bank communities. The president said the East Bank of the Marara is set for major transformation. We are now doing a major highway from Mandela all the way coming to Diamond. Mandela to Eccles was earmarked to be completed by, this, by the end of this year. We are still holding tight to that schedule despite some rainfall. Now, the Eccles to Diamond link has already been cleared and work will commence uh, very, very early in January on that link. And we are now in the process of awarding a contract to widen and reinforce the Eccles link that would be connected to the Mandel link in the meantime. Once all the roadworks are completed, the president said the East Bank is on course to become a hub for job creation. This area will be a reservoir for job creation also. We will have uh, more than three, four hundred acres of land developed specifically for industrial development and then we have commercial development. And the, from the type of proposals that we have already received, um, you will have hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of jobs created along the corridor of this road. The Maka to Great Diamond Road link was conceptualized when President Ali served as housing minister several years ago. The project was designed and its foundation work was started, but it was put on pause in 2015 under the previous government. Let's tell you now that Vice President Bharat Jagdeo has announced a 7% increase in salaries for sugar workers, in keeping with a salary increase that was only recently announced for public servants. Mr. Jagdeo met today with the guy Suko CEO Sishnarayan Singh, the Gan Agricultural and General Workers Union Gawu, and the Minister of Agriculture Zulfikar Mustafa to finalize the increase. As you would recall, in April when I met with the sugar workers who were terminated. I indicated that apart from the $250,000 grant 
that we were going to give for those workers who were terminated, that there would be a salary increase for the sugar workers this year. The government has dodged questions about whether workers who were rehired by Guy Suko were also paid a recent severance cash grant. Severance packages had already been paid to the sugar workers under the previous government when it closed some of the estates down. Although the previous government pumped billions of dollars into the sugar industry, Mr. Jagdew said the salary increase to the sugar workers is to correct a wrong that was done by the previous coalition government. He added that no increases were given to the sugar workers during their governance. And I promised at that time that whatever the public servants got, the sugar workers would also get. And so we decided that a 7% increase will also be awarded to the sugar workers. The 7% payout will be made before the end of the year, the vice president said. Gawu has welcomed the move by the government as a step in the right direction. Only recently, the National Assembly approved another $3 billion out of crop support for the sugar company, which continues to struggle financially. Turning now to the world of health, Ghana intends to review the information being shared by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control on the use of the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. An advisory panel to the U.S. CDC late last week said people should choose a Moderna or Pfizer vaccine over the Johnson & Johnson shot if those two vaccines are available. The advice followed reports that at least 54 people in the U.S., mainly women, have been hospitalized with blood clots that are linked to the vaccine, and nine of those persons have died. During today's COVID-19 update, the Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, said Guyana will study the information and advice from the U.S. health authorities. We in Guyana, we would certainly um, review the technical information that is emerging from the CDC and see whether or not um, we would need to change our recommendations. But so far, the WHO continues to recommend the J&J vaccine. The Johnson & Johnson one-shot vaccine is currently being offered in Guyana, and recently the Minister of Health recommended that the same Johnson & Johnson vaccine be used as a booster shot for persons who are fully vaccinated with the Sputnik vaccine. Against that backdrop, the health minister said the vaccine is safe. In this context, in a series of having three vaccines, it is going to be very effective. So the regimen that we are offering differs from what um, obtains in other parts of the world. The Minister of Health also noted that Ghana is currently considering advice from the World Health Organization for a second Johnson & Johnson dose for those persons who took the one-shot dose. And the recommendation from the CDC does not prohibit use of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, but has made it clear that the other options are a better choice. While secondary school students in Forms 2-6 to six are set to return to daily face-to-face -face classes from January, the Ghana Teachers Union has indicated that it is still to be consulted on that decision by the Education Ministry. However, the Ministry of Education is moving ahead with its plan for the full reopening of school for the secondary school students in those Forms 2-6. to six. Education Minister Priya Manik Chan has pressed aside the concerns of the Ghana Teachers Union. She said the Ministry of Education does not need to consult with the union to ask teachers to do their job. Going, going to school is normal. This is what teachers are paid to do. This is what they are called to do. This is their calling. This is their job. So I, I, we don't speak to the union to tell them that the teacher was right on the chalkboard either. We don't speak to the union to say, and I don't see um, other ministry is speaking to unions to say do what you you must do so this is just a natural progression from um we were home as an abnormality the normal thing to be is in school teaching manik chan said 70 percent of teachers are vaccinated and are ready to engage their students for in-person classes schools in Ghana have been closed to face-to-face -face classes since march of last year the education minister said there is a growing problem with learning loss with the nation's children and many of them need to return to school anything we do we're mandated both by the constitution as well as our just our moral ethical responsibility we have to do what is in the best interest of children. And it is in the best interest of children that the adults that surround them are protected, shielded, 
and less likely to transmit a deadly virus. Meanwhile, with the vaccination rate for secondary school children still low, the education minister said parents should seriously consider getting their children vaccinated as they return to the classroom. We're not forcing anyone to take the vaccine. But listen, I have taken dose one, dose two, and my booster. Um, and I, the, the ministry staff, we've all done the same thing. And people quite a number of persons have have done that a number of students millions of students have taken the vaccine so we are recommending and pushing and encouraging and going into schools trying to get children to take the vaccine but we are not going to hold anyone now and put a shot in their arms so it remains a choice, but that choice will have consequences. Based on the Ministry of Education figures, less than 50% of the nation's children in that category, ages 12 to 17 years old, are vaccinated with one shot of one of the COVID-19 vaccines. And those who are fully vaccinated are in the 20% range. Agents of the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit arrested Tushin resident Ryan De Silva with over 38 pounds of cocaine, which carries a street value of 113.1 million Ghana dollars. The man was arrested on Saturday as Kanlu carried out an operation in the East Bank Essequibo community of Tushin. The Silva was driving in the area when his car was stopped and searched by the Kanu agents. In the car, the agents found a bag with the 15 brick-like parcels of the cocaine. He was immediately arrested and taken to Kanu headquarters for questioning. The Silva remains in custody and will face charges soon. This evening, the Ghana Defense Force is investigating the drowning death of one of its soldiers. The body of the GDF rank Kenroy Sukla was recovered in the Essequibo River yesterday morning, two days after he went missing after a boat he was in capsized. According to the GDF, Sukla was a passenger on a private vessel on Friday when that vessel encountered some difficulties after being hit by a wave. The boat turned over, dumping its captain and passengers overboard. A group of GDF ranks who were on their way to a GDF location heard the screams for help and managed to rescue most of those thrown overboard. The GDF rank was the only one who died. The Ghana Defense Force says it will carry out a full probe. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. I'm feeling it! You know, 
it? That Christmassy feeling? Friend, I'm ready for everything. All the decorations and lights bring on all the Christmas goodness. And I heard GTT is giving away millions in cash and prizes for the season. It just doesn't get any better. Multiple draws, multiple chances to win, live radio giveaways of cash, grocery vouchers, full credit, and more. Free data, free calls, and free accessories with the purchase of every handset. Sign up, top up, pay any GTT bill or purchase a handset to get a chance to celebrate with GTT and MMG. Together we celebrate, together we win. GTT, together we rise. Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance, and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline. Fuel it up and drive! Across the region tonight, Cuba has vaccinated more of its citizens against COVID-19 than most of the world's largest and richest nations. A milestone that will make the poor communist-run country a test case as the highly contagious Omicron variant begins to circle the globe. The Caribbean island has vaccinated over 90% of its population with at least one dose and 83% of the population is now fully inoculated against COVID-19, placing Cuba second globally behind only the United Arab Emirates. Emirates. Infections and deaths from COVID-19 in Cuba have reduced on the island in recent weeks, falling to less than 1% of the peak back in August when fewer than half of the citizens were vaccinated. Nearly all of Cuba's children between the ages of 2 to 18 have now been vaccinated with the homegrown vaccines in Cuba. In Jamaica, less than a week into the winter tourist season, Jamaica is reporting visitor arrivals, it says, compare favorably with the pre-coronavirus era. A statement released by the Ministry of Tourism in Jamaica noted that over the past three days, an estimated 25,000 passengers passed through the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay, figures not realized since 2019. One official said the number of visitors arriving on Sunday were equally impressive, with some 52 flights on record. A government official said that barring any fallout from Omicron variant of the virus, there is every reason to believe that Jamaica will record an increase in visitor arrivals in the coming days. And finally tonight, international news. The British government says it needs to reserve the possibility of bringing in new COVID rules in England as cases of the Omicron variant surge before Christmas, the Prime Minister announced. But the Prime Minister did not announce any new measures but said ministers were looking at all kinds of things. The British Prime Minister said the data was being reviewed hour by hour, but there were still some things that they need to be clear about before they decide to go further. He urged people to exercise caution. A further 91,743 COVID cases were reported across the UK today, the second highest daily total on record. The government's scientific advisors say new restrictions may be required very soon, and they have suggested reducing the size of groups that can meet and closing venues where there is a high risk of transmission. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.